Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons and my channel members from our sister channel over at History in the Dark. You are the reason why this content remains just so, so cold. So cold. And today, we are going to discuss a time when the Earth was very, very cold and a specific species that thrived during that time. Yes, we are going to discuss the woolly mammoths. The fact that we actually weren't directly responsible for their extinction, and whether or not we could ever clone one. The woolly mammoth, or Mammothus primigenius, is probably the most well-known species of the mammoth genus. They're often associated and sometimes directly confused for mastodons, and while they are related to them, they're not that closely related. Woolly mammoths actually have most in common with modern Asian elephants, believe it or not. Not even the African elements like you might think, as the creatures that would become African elephants broke off into the Loxodonta genus millennia before mammoths even evolved. But in appearances, they look like very hairy elephants with massive curvy tusks. The woolly mammoth showed up about 800,000 years ago as an evolution of the steppe mammoth, and the species survived long enough to actually coexist with early humans. And we also know that early humans, as well as Neanderthals, hunted mammoths for their fur, their meat, and their tusks, which they could use to make weapons and other tools. And for a long time, it was thought that we were responsible for driving the mammoths to extinction as their decline seemed to coincide with us showing up. For recent scientific breakthroughs involving genetic diversity when it comes to the mammoth genome finds that this probably wasn't exactly the case. It's true we hunted them, but we've hunted a lot of species over the course of our existence, and while there have been occasions like the passenger pigeon or the dodo, where we definitely are the reason why those creatures died out, the mammoths were already on a severe decline when we showed up in the first place although there were some isolated populations that managed to survive on a handful of northern islands. They were on St. Paul Island until about 5,600 years ago, and Wrangell Island until about 4,000 years ago. Wrangell Island seems to be the last place mammoths walked the Earth, and if nature had its way, they'll likely never be seen again. The population evidence involving studies regarding the mammoth's genetic diversity found that their decline actually started a lot earlier, about 20,000 years ago, when the Ice Age would have been at its height. Initially, we had thought the decline started about 14,000 years ago, which in this regard is a pretty major difference. The theory is that even though mammoths were clearly built for the cold, it got so cold that even mammoths were having trouble finding food, and many starved to death, unable to find the grass that they normally would have eaten. Us hunting them would have had little to do with their decline because by that point, their genetic diversity was very low and the earth was getting warmer. Mammoths had a very difficult time surviving in hot climates because they just weren't built for it. I mean, look at them. This animal could not survive in a climate that we, as humans, would think of as very comfortable. But then that raises the other question. What about cloning them? <laughs> That's right. You see, with the power of mad science, we could bring the mammoth back from the grave. And in theory, it would be a possible thing to do. Cloning technology has been relatively hit or miss over the years, but there have been some steady advances with it. The problem is that there's always things like ethical constraints and concerns about playing God. Psh, ridiculous nonsense from people that are trying to hold back the power of true science. <laughs> I should stop laughing like that, it throws people off. The mammoth could, in theory, be cloned, as it didn't die off so long ago that all of its DNA completely disintegrated. DNA doesn't have a very long life when it comes to fossilization or being preserved. Even if it's frozen, the chances of getting viable, complete DNA out of a mammoth carcass is very unlikely. Cloning a woolly mammoth would be a pretty major undertaking. We already have enough difficulty cloning smaller mammals, like the Pyridian ibex, which is a species that has the interesting distinction of becoming extinct then becoming unextinct, and then going extinct again. Because technically it was cloned, but the female baby that was born died minutes after her birth due to a lung defect. 
There's a lot that can go wrong whenever we start tampering with the natural order of things. There's a lot of things we still don't completely understand about embryo development, and many issues can crop up when we start fiddling around with the process. And if we can't even get a wild goat species to last longer than a few minutes, what luck would a mammoth really have? Well, to go the clone route, we'd have to remove the DNA from the egg cell of a female elephant, as they're the only ones with embryos and wombs the size we would need to actually accomplish this task. The egg cell would be stimulated into dividing and then implanted in a female elephant. In theory, the resulting calf would have the genes of a woolly mammoth but nobody has ever found a viable mammoth cell to begin the cloning process in the first place. Due to the conditions of their preservation, the DNA in the remains of mammoths has deteriorated significantly over time, so it's really difficult to get anything viable out of this process, and again, even if we did, we would have to implant it in a female elephant. For one thing, there's the whole ethics thing again. Elephants are very intelligent. We'd effectively be experimenting on another living thing. That is notwithstanding the fact that we'd have to somehow navigate the birth canal of an elephant, which is insanely long, by the way. And then, just like the ibex, what's the chance that the resulting baby would even survive? Low. Very low. Another method involves artificial insemination, again, using a female elephant, but this would involve using sperm cells from frozen male woolly mammoths. This would create an elephant-mammoth hybrid. <laughs> and then this process would actually have to be repeated again and again, having multiple generations of crossbreeding the hybrids, eventually resulting in a nearly pure woolly mammoth. Few problems with this idea. For one thing, we don't have any viable mammoth sperm. It just doesn't seem to exist. Under frozen conditions, sperm only lasts about 15 years. So this is unlikely to work just because of that. But even if we got a hold of it, again, ethics. We know that African elephants and Asian elephants can technically crossbreed, but the one time it was attempted, he died of defects less than two weeks old. We have no idea how mammoth DNA would cross with elephant DNA. We'd have to experiment on a rather intelligent living mammal, and then we'd have to crossbreed the resulting offspring together, resulting in the whole lack of genetic diversity thing. Wasn't that one of the reasons why the mammoths went extinct in the first place? There's also the possibility of gene editing, which sounds alarmingly sinister, so I love it. This method involves replacing genes in elephant cells with mammoth genes. This would again result in a mammoth-elephant hybrid, using what little DNA they were able to get from a frozen mammoth carcass. The plan is to eventually use an artificial womb to grow an embryo that would be partially mammoth. The researchers don't think this method would ever result in a full mammoth, but just an elephant with some mammoth traits. So, you know, a genetic abomination. <laughs> Sorry, I keep doing that. The point is, this process is very, very, very difficult. And it's not something we can just easily do. I know Jurassic Park made it look easy, but even in that vein, the only reason they were able to do it is that John Hammond got billions in funding and managed to find a way to get a reasonably reliable source of prehistoric DNA. The problem we have in the real world is that that last thing, getting a reliable source of prehistoric DNA, is not easy, and in some cases, it's just impossible. So I can't say for sure if the woolly mammoth will ever be revived, but frankly, I'm not sure whether we should do that. Normally, I am on board for this type of thing, and I would love to see a real woolly mammoth, but we don't know what kind of habits they really had. We know we coexisted with them at one point, but that was thousands of years ago. We don't know much about their actual temperament or their needs in captivity. That's, of course, assuming anything that resulted from these cloning projects actually was able to live long enough for any of that to matter. Would I be interested in the prospect of recreating a six-ton, 12-foot-tall, hairy beast of Ice Age Fury? Yeah, I'm totally on board for that. But what I am saying is that the likelihood of even the best scientific minds we can muster being able to do it with current technology is going to be a difficult task. Till next time. This is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.